Thank you for your patronage. Thank you! What's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of Mentally Gone Reacts. My name is Callie Lacerda. And I'm Gabriela Lopes. And today we have a yet another treat. Um, if you guys haven't noticed by now, there's a clear pattern that's happening um, on the channel. It started, I think, with Batman Begins. And then we kind of segued into American Psycho, which is which is, which previous to this one is our most recent post. If you guys want to check that one out, we experienced that film for the first time. And that was Christian Bale's, debatably, like his most iconic role, I guess, is what people kind of agree on. And then this one is Ra's al Ghul's, yeah. Liam Neeson's most, like one of his most iconic roles, you know. And so we just wanted to experience and kind of like use Batman Begins as a uh, launching pad to kind of understand and really digest what their careers kind of and are, are I don't know of. anything about Liam Neeson. Yeah, I, I, other I don't than remember. The, other than like, I know that this movie, I don't know if it's even this movie because I know it's like a trilogy, but the the line like, I'll find you and I will kill you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's literally all I know just because like as a kid, like you would play around and say that and stuff. But I had no idea what like what it was even from. Yeah. I don't remember watching this one. Um, it came out uh, 2008. Jeez, yeah, I was eight, guys. So just yeah. to just to give you some some clarity there, it's like right, and it's just so old, and I don't think I've seen it. Like I definitely haven't seen it as an adult. I might have seen it as a kid, maybe with my cousins. Like I don't remember, but that's the whole point. Is that to me, it's like fresh, you know, and I can't remember a film where Liam Neeson, you know, plays like a significant role. Like I haven't really seen that many films with Liam Neeson specifically. So it'll be interesting to check it out and see what the hype is about. People, um, a few people actually in the comments of John Wick recommended Taken because I guess it's in a similar format. It's like one man who's like a badass and then he seeks revenge for something that's done to him. In John Wick, it was the dog. In this one, we're going to find out what it is. But it's like the similar um, story arc, I guess. It's the similar motif. And so I'm all in. You know, like I love John Wick. Yeah, because now that I'm thinking about it, if he's the one that's saying like, I will find you and I will kill you, then it's definitely a revenge story. Yeah, I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> Like, I don't even know what that is. Like, all you're saying is, <laughs> I will find it, I, I will kill you. That's all I know, though. I swear, it's like in that voice, like, I will find you, and I will kill you. <laughs> yeah. It's like a popular... I mean, again, a lot of these movies that we've been experiencing, a lot of them are just deeply disseminated in popular culture, you know? They, they, they've they been memefied. Yeah. They're all over the place. And, yeah, but I don't think I know what you're talking about maybe if i see it like it'll like trigger something it'll in click. my brain yeah. i feel like maybe it'll click once yeah. you once you hear it i don't know mm -hmm. all right so anything else that's it i'm ready i'm ready to watch it ready to see what's being taken yeah taken what <laughs> taken, taken from whom i don't know what's yeah. what's taken is what yeah. i want to know he took a box of chocolates yeah from forrest gump he stole from forrest gump and now batman's after him well, I don't worry. I still hear you. Just oh, okay. Uh, this is the shortest um, intro that we've done, I think, under five minutes. And that's why we're just going to cap it there. And we're just going to get right into it. Because usually our intros are super long and people complain often. <laughs> but um, this one just happens to be shorter. Because, again, I have no idea what this is. I can't really speak much on it. And you guys know you can skip it in the in the timestamp area, by yeah, the way. Yeah, right. Just just a friendly reminder. Yeah. <laughs> wink, wink. All right. Let's just jump right into it. Ready? Yeah, wait. Oh, oh wait. sorry. Give me one second. I just have to put glasses on, too. <laughs> I've been, like, jumping the I'm gun. like, let's go, jump. <laughs> I'm <laughs> like, I'm still adjusting. But first, let me take a selfie. No, sorry, guys. I'm just, I'm just literally fixing my hair because it's been such a nuisance, like, having this long of hair during the humidity of the summertime in New Jersey. It's just a lot to deal yeah, with yeah it's tense outside it's like <laughs> i'm almost ready to degrees. just chop it at this point yeah just go full amber like, rose no i didn't say shave <laughs> well maybe if we get like a million subscribers on the channel yeah don't say I'll stuff shave. like that because then you'll have to do it 
All right, let's go, guys. All right, <laughs> Millie Hoka, if you want to see her bald, and then a million by the end of this year. And then, so I don't know. No. And then we'll sell her hair too, because I know a lot of you guys oh, out there would love no. to <laughs> to buy the hair. No, no. <laughs> It'll be like a pack of like those individually packaged um, Ziploc no, bags. No, no, a thousand dollars per strand. And then when cloning technology comes out you oh, can clone no, no. your own <laughs> no guys please i don't need to see <laughs> it's another a joke obviously. i don't need to uh, see another me on the street yeah anyways one's already too much all right so let's just jump right into it oh no eating takeout oh i oh no is this one of those movies that he lost his family and now it's like he's alone just like the john wick yeah it's, it's like him alone it just opens up lonely lonely some because you see the Chinese takeout like that. He's very precise with his wrapping. That's a nice house. Yeah. Someone's rich. Yeah, or in the mob. Excuse me, but I work for the father. The real father. Oh, shoot. <gasps> Stepfather. No. Put it right there with the other. I want to give it to her myself. Still having trouble following the rules, I see. Uh, are you being serious? Sweetie, I think it's Batman or Stubborn oh, and not the oh, others. No. Oh, the mother has a stick up her butt. A karaoke machine? Well, I figure she wants to be a singer. When she was 12, Brian, we've moved on. Oh my god. What a biatch, dude. Here, one for the book. Oh, we have a professional photographer. Big oh smile, god. sweetie. Oh my gosh. Oh, she's... I hate the mom. It's my first note. <laughs> I know why they divorced. Yeah. And done. I'm, I'm sufferable, dude. I'm assuming that's the stepfather with the horse. Oh. He's definitely in, in the fucking mafia, dude. That's sad. I just wanted to be here to wish her a happy birthday. Good to see you, Brian. You too. That's it? Like, they're basically kicking him out? Yeah, it's like, thanks for coming, dropping off the gift. Now I'll leave. Yeah. <laughs> Look and oh, that's so sad. It's just like sitting on the floor now. Yeah, it's like unwrapped. <laughs> oh man, I'll always be grateful for anything I get. Yeah, I don't have a dad, so me too. <laughs> no, it's not an emotional moment, babe. You don't have to do that every time I oh, mention it. Look, but yeah, this is so heartfelt. He has a scrapbook. This is getting me so emotional. Oh, daddy's girl. Oh, I cry <laughs> like a little girl. <laughs> I'm kidding. Look, I'm gonna do what I what she does to me. Oh. That is pretty cool though. Like that shows that he actually cares. Hey! hey. hey. Huh? Aww. Come on. The bachelor like I didn't call her. friends, you know? It's like bachelor lifestyle. Barbecue Aww, with drinks. I'm just so happy he has friends. I promised her I would never miss a birthday. Yeah, yeah, that went down well at Langley, huh? Uh, when they found out you flew the coop to attend your child's birthday 9,000 miles away. Damn. Damn. My point is, we have an open space. Say the word, it's yours. What is this, like an ex-military? Yeah, what's going on? What did he retire from? Okay, it'll be perfect, just like old times. Better. No one gets killed. Mm. Mm. So, they're like retired, but now they're doing security detail, right? So, they're retired military for sure. Mm, special okay. forces retired special forces oh that's like britney spears at the time yeah this is supposed to be someone who was popping back in 2008 i think it was britney spears right and his daughter wanted to be a singer maybe he's like looking at her and thinking that yeah. Like, this is what his daughter would be, kind of thing. I have a daughter who wants to be a singer and was wondering if you had any tips for her. Yeah, I do. Don't want to pick another career. Because <laughs> <laughs> of the competition, right? Yeah, that's crazy. It's like very cutthroat. Hey, I'm happy you called. I'm happy you called. <laughs> what? Lunch, tomorrow. Just go back in the room, right? <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> oh. It's like zombies, isn't that crazy? Oh, it's scary. It's like a horde of zombies. Like, what do they want to do with this star? You know, like, you never know. Oh, my <gasps> God. What? Oh, oh. Oh, my God. Oh, I thought he was going to kill her. Oh, shoot. 
Damn, for what? Damn, they wanted to kill her. That's crazy. It's okay, it's okay. <laughs> mm. Better give him singing lessons now. Give his daughter singing lessons for free. Save their life. You still got the edge. There's more of this to be had. This looks like this guy could be Bruce Willis's brother. Right. <laughs> her cousin or something. Mr. Mills, she'd like to see you. That was so dramatic. Yeah. <laughs> that was like that guy's one line in the movie. He's like, all right, I'm going to act the shit out of this. First number is Gia, my vocal coach. If he says she can sing, she can sing. The second number is my manager. If Gio clears her, he'll make sure she gets a shot. Oh, Damn. Well, okay. That's a lot. Thank you. He just did his job though, right? So then it's like that that debate. Damn, she gave her a game a kiss, greeted him in robes. It's like very suggestive kind of. Or maybe I'm looking too much into it, but No, it's nice. It was nice. No, like what she did was nice, yeah. Oh, oh my god, this lady do I hate the mom. <laughs> I'm so sorry, guys. I literally wrote down mom has a stick <laughs> up her butt. Her cousins asked us to spend vacation with them in Paris. Said, please. I really, really want to go. Don't make a big deal out of this, Brian. Just sign the paper. Oh my god, did I hate oh this lady gosh. so much? It's like so disconnected emotionally. I know, it's like she's disgusted. Dad, please. I don't think a 17 year old should be traveling alone. I'm not going to be alone. Two 17 year olds. Amanda's 19. Oh no, he has good intentions. I trust that he does. I'm not comfortable putting my daughter at risk. Putting our daughter at risk by going to Paris? You're pathetic. Mm -hmm. I feel that he has good intentions. I feel that he does. Yeah. Because, yeah, like, mm -hmm. you're going to a foreign country. You don't even speak the primary language. And this girl doesn't act mature, you know? Like, she doesn't give off, like, a mature, in, like, you know? Yeah, no. She's very childlike and very innocent and naive. You move, I want to know where and with whom you be staying. Okay. Where? One last thing. I get to take you to the airport. Okay. He's still gonna go. <laughs> yeah, he's gonna sneak his way on that plane, dude. <laughs> if he, if he's the dad that he's been showing himself to be, I know that he's not just gonna let this slide like this. Yeah. Didn't it happen easier yeah. just to sign it the first time around? Oh my <gasps> god, dude, you're never satisfied. That's why he left you, dude. He hates you, don't you see? Oh, stop. No, I hate this lady. I don't care. I'm sorry. I I, I hate her. You don't have to worry. That's like telling water not to be wet, sweetie. <laughs> Mom says your job made you paranoid. Oh, my job made me aware. Yeah, that's what I was going to say, and that's what I wrote down. I worked for the government. You know that. So, you were like a spy, right? <laughs> Special agent. Did you have a good job? Yes. Yep, it was. Do you miss it? I missed you more. Hmm. No. That's wholesome. It doesn't seem like the daughter holds any resentment towards him not really being around. Yeah, she seems more understandable. Not understandable, understanding rather. Kid! Dad, there's Amanda. Go ahead, I'll get the bags. Dude, they act like kids. Am I the only one that's going crazy? She acts like she's 14. With What's the running that? and stuff, you know? Wait. Oh, it's not just Paris. Oh, no. She's not just going to Paris. I know. She lied to me. Your rules and conditions. What is this? It's you two's European tour dates. You two. <laughs> Bubble here behind your wall with your maids, chauffeurs, and mm -hmm. servants. You have no idea what the world is yes, like. Yes, and neither will yeah. she, unless she goes out and experiences it. Nah. He's right. He's right, 100%. Listen, I, I know you moved here to build some sort of relationship with Kimmy, but you're not going to do that by smothering her. Let her live, or I promise, I promise you'll lose her. Oh boy, but it's not right to lie about her, like where. Right, and then have him sign the papers, which is, you know, like it's, it's deception. Buddies. 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 You've been. Yeah, briefly. And super I've been. Briefly. Yeah. Briefly. Briefly. I went from like a delayed flight when we the two of you yes please <laughs> okay <laughs> oh look at the iphones back then <laughs> um you're going into paris we oui. um you know taxi here are so damn expensive want to share oh no oh my gosh it's already starting 
the light number. How are you going to get in some strangers, like in a car with a stranger? I'm literally riding too friendly with strangers. <laughs> oh, it's too much, dude. It's it's so naive. It's actually my cousins, but they're in Madrid for the summer, so we have the whole place to ourselves. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. How well, uh, I have to be going. Nice to meet you. Oh, okay. You too. Bye. This guy knows where they live. There is a party tonight at school. Want to come? Sure, yeah. Amanda, we don't even know him. What is there to know? He's hot. I can pick you up uh, around nine. Oh my gosh. Um, your apartment? Uh, it's the whole fifth floor, Hoffman. Okay, see you tonight. Okay, bye. 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 No, I don't trust this guy. Neuf rue de la Pompe, fifth floor. Two girls around 18. Jesus, dude. Two girls around 18. Why did he say it like that? Like oh, he's going to sell them off or something, right? It's so weird. Oh, man. I'm going to sleep with him. Who? Peter. You just met him. I hear French guys are amazing in bed. Maybe he has a friend. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you got to lose it sometime. Might as well be in Paris. Lose it. Oh, she's the virgin. I could see this going downhill very quick, like very soon and very quickly. The Peter guy knows that they're alone. That's the worst. I thought he was going out to Paris too. She's 17. She's in Paris. Give her some space. She'll call. I'll have a drink or something. Good night. Oh my God, dude. Who, uh, like, what did he do to this lady? Did he cheat on 20, 100,000 people? They're in Spain. I didn't know, I swear. To Spain. Oh, shit. Is there anything else you want to tell me? Oh, oh, oh. The cousins are back. <laughs> oh, my God, they got Amanda. Oh, my God. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my God. Oh, shoot, it happened that... Oh, my God, lock the door! All right, this to me. Oh, God. Oh, my gosh. Oh, that... Oh, my God. Yes, Peter. Peter? Peter who? I don't know. American? I don't Did he know where you were staying? He knew everything. <laughs> Damn it, Did dude. she lock the door? No, she's, she's dumb. How many people are there? Be precise. Three, four, I don't know. Where are you? I'm in the bathroom. Go to the next bedroom. Get under the bed. Tell me when you're there. Oh my god, that's a risk, like leaving the room. Oh my god. Okay. He's so used to this too, you know? He has years of training. Oh my gosh. Leave the phone on the floor. Concentrate. Shout out everything you see about them. Hair color, eye color, tall, short, scars. Anything you see, you understand? That's smart. Of course they're going to check under the bed. They're not amateurs. Put the phone closer so I can hear. Put the phone on the floor, though. Drop it, right, he said? Yeah, but he said put it closer right now so that he can hear them. Oh, maybe they won't take her. Maybe they won't. <laughs> I think they're... <laughs> oh! oh, my God. Oh, my gosh. I was like, shh, don't talk. Oh my god, dude, this is wild. Damn, all of a sudden I'm completely sold on on everything. I don't know who you are. I don't know what you want. What's gonna be here? I can tell you I don't have money, but what I do have are a very particular set of skills. Skills I have acquired over a very long career. Mm -hmm. Skills that make me a nightmare for people like you. Shit. If you let my daughter go now, that'll be the end of it. But if you don't... I will look for you. I will find you, and I will kill you. Ooh, God dang, dude. That Oof. hits different when good you hear luck. the whole scene. He's like, good luck. Oh my, oh my gosh. And the game begins. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. I was like, oh, I was almost crying. Yeah. It hearing her scream. Any enemies overseas, Stuart? Why would I have any enemies? Because you do business overseas through multiple shell corporations. Because you were involved in an oil deal with a bunch of Russians that went south. Oh, no. <laughs> Please get her back to me, Brian. Oh, my God. First, I have to find her. I hate this lady, guys. Guys, I hate this lady. 
They're speaking Albanian based on their accents and dialects. Yeah. They must be from a town called Trapoja. The place is ground zero for scummers like this. Even the Russians give these guys a wide berth. Oh no. And we have information that a mobster boss by the name of Marco Ocha I moved to Paris about six months ago. The specialty of the groups coming out of this area is women. Wow. I had a feeling. Yeah, yeah, that's oh why I thought too. Oh my gosh. Because it's very organized. Once they'd smuggle them in, they'd addict them to drugs and turn them into prostitutes. Oh my god. Oh my gosh. Uh, oh, that stuff's so scary. I'm so tensed up right now. Like, I'm just like. Yeah. I'm like there with him, you know? <sighs> I'm like on the plane with him. Like, listening. I'm like, you know, it's crazy. I, like, I can't imagine that pain, f no, like, me, as a parent, you know? Me neither. Because they might still be in there, you think? Like, some, like, not the girls, but some men, you know? Damn, the suitcases are still there. <laughs> That's horrifying. That's crazy, dude. It's wild. It's it's insane how he's like literally imagining the play by play. Oh boy. Oh, is there some DNA? Ooh, look at him. It's probably her DNA, right? It's like a strand no, of hair. No, it might be theirs. The guy, yeah, like like the guy that was maybe kicked towards the glass. Imagine he can tap into the camera. What's that? Oh, that's them on the plane. Oh, the guy who took the picture. Maybe there's like a reflection <gasps> on the yes! thing right there. There you go. It's like zoom in, enhance it, you know, just like they do in the movies. In oh, these movies. man, if this was like nowadays, he would really have a high quality photo there. Look at that. See, enhance. <laughs> it's it's only in these movies. Oh, look, he's eye he's eyeballing his next victim. Oh, that's so scary. You see that? You don't even notice it, dude. That's why I say you have to be aware of your surroundings at all times, everywhere you go. You know, cats here are so damn expensive. Want to share? Why not? Great. Oh my gosh, is it that easy? Yeah, it is. Hey, drive! He's like, I don't want to drive with this. The next rip drives into your lungs. The two American girls, where are they? Oh, oh. Ooh, he's gonna throw. Ooh, ooh. Oh, oh, look at him. He's look just him. running, dude. Run out. Get in the car. Drive it. Oh, shoot. The cops. Let's go. Let's go. Haul uh, Yeah, like, he doesn't work for the government here. <laughs> yeah. No, he's going to jump on the truck. No way. Oh, my gosh. No way. Parkour. Just do the same thing. Just do the same thing. He's not young like he is, you know? <laughs> he's, like, thinking, like, yeah, I'm a pretty badass, but I'm also 50, you know? Oh. Yeah. No, I was going to say yes, but then I said no because he's the only source of information right now. This guy might Just be Just like okay. the old days. Do you have it any other way? And I assume you don't want to go to the police. I was told I have 96 hours. That was 16 hours ago. Okay. We should find a spotter. I found him. He's dead. <laughs> the Albanian he showed up from the east six, seven years ago. 15, 20 of them. Now there are hundreds. Hundreds. Oh, yeah. Who is he calling? He better be calling for backup. <laughs> I, again, don't trust no one, man. I don't. I don't know. Ah, oh, shoot. Avec lui, ça va pas le rester longtemps. Vous laissez pas endormir. Well, we didn't. We didn't get a word of that. <laughs> yeah. I don't understand French at all. Albanian to English. You do speak Albanian. Yeah, Albanian, Serbian, Croatian. I was a teacher in primary school before the war began. Nobody cares. <laughs> I do not understand. It is the job exactly. Right now, the job is to wait here. Look. Oh, those might be. 
like a product of it happening to them. If I want a, a, a package deal, do I get a discount? You cost me two now. My name's Brian. Oh, no. I thought we were negotiating. And then I swear it's not my fault. I told him. Oh, no. Oh, he put a planner on him. If I see you again, I'll kill you. Wait, he doesn't get the girl? No, she has to stay out and make money. Who doesn't get the girl? Him, he paid. Oh. <laughs> no. Translate. They're talking about you. What about me? They're not saying nice things. Be specific. Go, dude, translate. Excuse me, Mr. Smith. What an asshole you are. Oh, this guy's too... Fresh merchandise giving problems. Mr. Smith, I do not understand any of this. Fresh merchandise giving problems. Ooh. He paid him from t 10 hours. Dictionary, did you bring one? Interesting. Thank you. All right. He's right. He's got a lead because at this point, he, there's probably like three days left. Yeah. Like 72 hours. Right. Because earlier he said 16 hours have passed. So mm. it was already down to 80. Oh, shoot. This is where they're drugging them. And prostituting them. Look, they're all needled up. He might find his daughter in there, so... Oh, God. Oh, <gasps> that's the jacket. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Is that her? Is that her? No. Where did you get this? Oh, shoot. Hey! Oh. Oh my gosh. Damn. Oh my god, no questions asked. No conversation. Ooh. 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 Oh damn. Well, now he's not 50 years old, right? Yeah. <laughs> oh sh Oh, you heard the cracking? Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. This guy's is Oh, innocent life. No. Oh, no. Innocent life. Oh, no. And he's drawing so much attention. I know. And he's only saving one girl or he's saving all of them. Ooh, oh, man. automatic. Oh, my God. Does he have the keys to that? Oh, shoot. Ooh. <gasps> no. Oh, but they, it better not burn down the whole place. I hope it does. Good. No, at least to create a distraction. It's not going to burn down the oh. the place where everybody is. This guy's following him. That guy's been following him ever since he left that place with the translator. Oh, he knows. <laughs> okay. Yeah, throw him off the trail. Oh, look, he knew. <laughs> He's just like me. I would do something like that. Yeah, you already do that in, in traffic. <laughs> Middle finger. <laughs> hey, if you're giving me a super hard time for no reason. Not wiring a car. A car. Or go like this. I'm like, what do you, what do you what want? What are you doing? Up? What are you doing? <laughs> and then the person's packing heat, you know, road rage, and then just like pulls up next to you on the highway. Because I've, I've seen TikToks where people just... The usual accommodation plus one. He said one only. Huh? Plus one. Oh, plus one. Okay. A little fling. That's kind of what it's implying. Yeah. You're in a motel. Well, the other guy knows him. So he probably knows like who he is and what he does. Oh, shoot. I hope he's able to revive her back to her normal state. Yeah, he's just gonna like sober her up, maybe give her like a cold shower, give her. Yes. We need to talk. Well, can't you come and meet me first? I can't see you. Where are you? Tell him to stop jogging now. <laughs> you didn't really think I was going to come down there, did you? I didn't think you were going to make such a mess. I didn't have time to worry about payments. I know. You have 70 hours. Oh, they're tracking him down. To the other French government for best services rendered. Oh, come on. I'm not trying to be the state. I'm trying to save my daughter. It was a trailer, not a building. 
Oh, he's gonna disappear in time. I'm rooting for him. Yeah, just oh. like Yeah, just like Ra's al Ghul, just like Batman. Oh shit. Oh, they gave he gave him a, a fake location. That's so yeah, because he's ten steps ahead, dude. Oh, oh. she's up. <coughs> no, 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 leave it. It's all right. It's fluid. She's scared. She's scared. It's all right. She kind of looks like his daughter. I was cold. She gave it to me. Where? Where did she give it to me? In the house. The house with the red door. Sorry. Oh my gosh. The house with the red door? He said it was a party. And the girl who gave you this jacket, was she in the house? The house with the red door. She, she's my daughter. <laughs> I need to find this house. Do you know where it is? Paradise. Rue de, Pare de Paradise. Paradise. Yeah. Paradise. I help you? I'm here to see your boss. No, boss. I push one button and 30 agents will be here before you have time to scratch your worthless balls. Now stop jerking around before I close you down for wasting my time. Oh, shoot. All right. Black, one shooter, please. No, oh, he's like already demanding coffee. What is it you want? I'm here to negotiate the race. We already negotiated the right with Mr. Macon. Mr. Macon has moved to another division. I'm here for the renegotiation. Oh, he's smart. He's smart. He's trying to blend in. By the way, which one of you is Marco? I was told Marco is in charge. We are all Marco. Marco from Tropuya. We're all from Tropuya. Oh, God. A friend gave this to me. It's Albanian. You mind translating it? <laughs> Good luck. Oh, that's the guy. Wow. 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 That's so genius, dude. Wow. Oh, my God. Whoa, wait. But he can't just react now, so... You don't remember me. <gasps> With the oh, voice. No. Two days ago, I told you I would find you. Yep. <laughs> Fuck you, dude. Let's go. Ooh! Let's go. Let's go. John Wick right here, dude. Ooh. Oh, my God. Ooh. Get all of them. Get all of them. L leave no one alive. Get every single soul in there. Oh, he pretend, you saw? Wow, he played dead. Ooh, oh my god. Wow. I love this. So smart, dude. This oh guy's my god. Woo! So smart. Right on the back of the neck. I know. Oh, I thought that was her. Oh, come on. He has to save these girls too, right? Like he, like he has to, like, w like what does he do? Oh, that might be her. No. Oh shoot! It looked like her. I know. Oh, right that's now. the friend. <gasps> that's the friend. Oh, she's dead. I think. She overdosed, right? Yeah, it she looks, looks like dead. Her eyes are not blinking. Oh no, no. Damn. Overdose or something. You know what's messed up to think about is that even dead, they probably still abused her. Yeah. I need you That's to be focused. That's exactly what I was thinking. That's what's messed up. Like, who knows how long she's been dead, you know? Who knows? That's what's messed up. <laughs> I've never seen that tactic of torture, dude. That's wild. <sighs> Steel rods. Where is she? <laughs> Ooh, turn the electricity on. Give him a little jolt, dude. Let's go. Let's go. Tactics right here. Muffle his scream while he does it. Look at that. Look at the veins. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Nice. Perfect. Where is she? Where is she? Oh, no, dude. Oh, are you being serious? That's what I said. Keep going. Keep going. Like, let him just enjoy it. He obviously loves it. There you go. There's nothing he can fear more than this man in front of him right yeah. now. You either give me what I need or this switch will stay on until they turn the power off for lack of payment on the bill. Ooh. Ooh. Stucky Pearson's. Sell She was Pearson. Lot of money. Oh, and she's a virgin. That is the plan. Where can I find him? Oh, come on. I don't know. Please! I, I don't know! I don't know! 
<laughs> Leave it on. Leave it on. Please. Please. He, oh. he doesn't show mercy for... No, because all the girls that cried, just like he did, you know? Yeah. Imagine all the girls that cried. <laughs> Woo! Perfect. That's music to my ears. Keep it like that. Ça sent bon le poulet jusqu'au bout de la rue. Look who drove by. I had a feeling he did not want to see him. The children waited up for you. If you tuck them in, maybe we can eat before everything gets cool. He has to behave in front of his wife and kids. Yep. This is perfect. This is smart. He's gonna go make a call. I don't trust this guy. I don't know what his deal is. I know. Like, doesn't he wanna? I thought he was a friend. People there know someone that works in your office, I think. A Mr. McCann. You know him? Oh, Henry! I call him Mr. Nervous. Always seems like he's about to have a problem. <laughs> Carrots? Oh, he's nervous. I know everything. I hope you're not involved in this shit. <laughs> oh, boy. Tell her. Tell her. Involved in what? What are you two talking about? Tell, tell her. her. Let's get going. Dinner is over. I'm not finished yet. Yes, you are. <laughs> he's not going to kill him. Oh, he already checked the bathroom. <laughs> Ooh. Oh. <gasps> what? It's a flash one. But if you don't get me what I need, the last thing you'll see before I make your children orphans is the bullet I put between her eyes. What the heck is going on, dude? What? Oh my god, I love this movie. I officially love this movie. This guy's a genius, dude. Genius. Make this much less painful if you had been more concerned about my daughter and less concerned about your goddamn desk. Ooh. Hoo. Saint Clair, Patrice. Saint Clair. Patrice Saint Clair. Oh, ooh. So the French government's involved, and that's what I wrote down. Government conspiracy. That was loaded too. Yes, like sir. it was a loaded scene. I'm sure she'll be fine. Yeah. Is this the Illuminati party? You know, those like <laughs> Ooh, right in the 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 thing, the trachea, right? Is what they call it? Trachea. Trachea, yeah. As far as like the elites and these parties and use of people go, the only thing I'm gonna say is the word Epstein. Your champagne? Yeah, I would have taken. Ooh. This guy's quick oh. to the point. I love that about him. He's very yeah, quick. Yeah, that's a good spot to really take someone down. Oh 50, my gosh. 50,000. 50,000. 100. 100,000. Oh, this is horrible. Certified pure. Certified pure virgin. Well, she doesn't speak French, right? Or does she? I don't know. The bidding will begin at 100,000. Oh, it looks like her. Yep, it's her. Let's go. Let's go. We got her. She's alive. She's alive. We got her. 100,000. I said, I heard what you said. Buy her. 350,000. Oh my gosh. Please, please. Oh my gosh, please. You can collect your purchases directly. Move. You would never get away with this. If you want to live, you'll make sure I do. Oh, <gasps> oh. No. Oh, my God. Oh, God. Oh, no, 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 no. And now she's sold to the guy, to that guy. It doesn't matter what we call you, really. What does matter is what you're doing here. Do you mind telling me what you're doing here? Please. I'm her father. Oh, my. Give her to me. I wish I could, honestly. See, I'm, I'm a father myself. I have two sons. And oh, please. This business, you have no refunds, no returns, no discounts, no buybacks. All sales are final. Besides discretion, it's about the only rule. Kill him quietly. Yeah, like that That automatically makes them want to kill him because it's like, oh, it's a liability. Of course, yeah, there's no other way. And he knows too much. Oh, please. 
He's gotta. He's gonna find a way out. He's gonna use his leg momentum. Maybe that thing will break. Yep. Oh, thank God. Dude, this guy is like freaking god. Uh, but now it's like, where does where's his daughter going? Well, she's going to the highest bidder, so there's no buybacks. Yeah, he needs to find that guy now. <laughs> yeah. Where he hides somewhere. Ooh. Right in the foot. Mm -hmm. Add another one to the list. Ooh, no mercy. Let's go. Look, I'm putting myself in a position, like in his position as a father, which I'm not a father, but I can only imagine. That's why I keep saying no mercy. No mercy. Kill all of them. Every single one. This guy, too. I know how you feel. We should, we should talk. You don't know. <laughs> he should get his yeah, daughter no and idea. see what it's like. Where is she? Please. Understand. Please try to. There's a boat by the key. A boat. Oh, no. Please. Please. It wasn't personal. It was all personal to me. Ooh. Empty the clip. Empty the clip. It's Empty the business, clip. It's all business. Nothing personal. Do we, do we hear that in The Godfather? Oh, shoot. So that, that ship won't set sail. Right, right. Until that guy gets there. Right. Oh, can't, he has to get in the car. There's no way he's running that fast. That's fast as a car. Come on. Ooh. Ow. Have you ever closed a car door on your I'm, finger by I, accident? I did that to my brother. <laughs> right. Now, <laughs> by mistake. Imagine your head on purpose, you know? Oh, my God. Your whole skull, dude. It's like it's inhumane, man. Yeah. Ooh, my gosh. I, I, like, I don't know what language is written well, on Well, the they might all be Albanian. Albanian, yeah. Arab, maybe. I don't know. Oh, it's like that. Come on, come on. <laughs> I like how they try to fight back. Speaking of fish, we're gonna meet the big fish. Oh, he sees him. Ooh, he's good with doors. Like yeah. slamming people's face with doors. He's nice at that. <laughs> I would respond and be like, good luck. Yeah. <laughs> well, it wasn't this guy, but still. Woo, to the face to the face or i found you you yeah. know because he said he he was saying i will find them i have a particular set of skills Ooh. Ooh, nice oh right in the achilles heel you saw yeah oh look come on this guy can this guy's like half his size is he wearing eyeliner <laughs> yeah, but that's probably like the culture and stuff. Well, he's also like a high tier assassin, I would assume, like a high tier security detail, you know? Because yeah, he's guarding the big fish. He's twice his size. But Look size doesn't matter, it's skill, you know? I suppose. But the way he threw him off of him. Yeah. Ooh. Oh, my oh my god. Oh. Oh, it's tough. Oh. Ooh, made him oh, made him take himself out oh mm -hmm. my gosh nice. like i know that like we're thinking oh these people deserve it but, yeah, but i can't human. help to <laughs> just you know yeah on a human level right just like Crazy. wince every single time i see it he could take him out from there he has good aim yeah but he could easily just slice slice her throat and she's gone no, he can't. We can't need right there. Boom. Oh, he found like a weak moment. Yep. Oh, shoot. Damn. Oh, my gosh. Damn. Guess dad was right. I guess daddy was right. Huh? Should have listened, dude. Should have listened. <laughs> Again, it's not her fault, obviously, but you should listen to your dad, man. Like, Don't cry. Try your eyes. 
Yeah, you got lucky, man. Because it could have been her instead of her friend, you know? Like, you don't know. You got very lucky. Oh, man. God. Thank you. Nope. I guess now all's forgiven, right? It should be. It really should be. Yeah, he deserves it. He deserves everything, man. That was crazy. I love you, Dad. Love you too. So they don't have a conversation about the blonde friend. Ah, uh, it's a like I don't know. It's a lot, huh? Yeah, because there's a lot of happiness, and I get it, but. How about the friend? Like, what happens there? I told you, it's a surprise. Like, what happens with them? Hi. Oh, shit. When someone says hi, it's usually polite to say hi back. So I heard you want to be a singer. I she do. does. Well, come on in. Let's see what you got. Aw, that's sweet. Imagine she sucks at singing. <laughs> Imagine she's just the worst singer ever. Oh, I don't think that... Come on, the dad wouldn't do that to her. Hold on, give me one sec. Dun -dun 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 -dun. All right. I always check for post credit scenes, but there's never any. I doubt. I always doubt it whenever it's like some random, you know. Yeah, like old school movie. Yeah, like 2008. I don't know. Were they doing that already? I don't know when it started. Maybe Marvel was doing it already. But wait, like, what are your thoughts? Whew. That was that was heavy. Yeah. Um, because it's important to get your perspective, I think, because, you know, as a girl and, you know, going like if you were to put yourself in her shoes, like obviously it's horrific. But what, like what were your thoughts, immediate thoughts about it? Anything? I, th I think on a personal level, it's it's definitely like anything in line with just um you know assault or whatever like those things or or like something happening to you like getting kidnapped and and all of these things like that is definitely a a like subconscious fear that all women i i would think have yeah. so it's like when you're alone in the parking lot and you're walking you're always like checking your six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve like you grow eyes on the back of your head even with your like hyper sense of hearing well at least that's how i feel it's like i i check my car i look in the back seat when i get in i lock it the car immediately it's like these little things and even if i don't do it frantically it, it is things that i think about and do yeah um so yeah like I don't know. It's watching this. It's definitely tough when you start thinking about that, like thinking about those, those like possible scenarios. I guess you know. Mm -hmm. Um, and and the fact that this is, like it's not even a possible scenario. Like this is happening yeah. now, currently. Mm -hmm. Like as we're talking, this is happening to girls across the the world not even just in maybe in this country too i'm sure in a lot of countries yeah children too children mm -hmm. right Infants. it's like these these young girls boys it doesn't matter and so it's like when you think about that and and that's why we do a podcast and why we talk about these things that you know that are conspiracies but we always kind of hide behind that term you know because Nowadays, you can't even speak uh, outwardly towards any of this stuff, you know. And and there's the new movie that I told you about. Uh, it's called Sound of Freedom. And it's currently in theaters um, as of this recording. And there have been multiple freak incidents um, across the entire country um, in theaters where the movie will play. And then there's like a freak accident malfunction. Like something happens, a fire alarm goes off the movie stops playing it's broken film and so a lot of i think the uh, the people in power like the elites quote unquote like they do 
try to control the narrative as much as possible and keep it very tucked under the rug and that's the whole epstein case which we're not going to like get into it on this episode because it's not the place or time i guess but if you guys want to hear more about our thoughts on that we have a another youtube channel just called mentally gone and we do a podcast there a weekly podcast and we talk about that stuff yeah and and we mentioned like one example with Mm -hmm. um with like a with like what goes on in the ukraine because it there are a lot of stories of of you know these kinds of these kind of rings like pedophile rings and stuff being run or yeah. human being run in the ukraine and kiev or, or kiev is one of the largest places that this happens centers for human yep and so it's like we talk about these things on our podcast and so we like it sucks because that doesn't do anything yeah and that's the truth like all it does is just make other people aware of it too people Mm -hmm. who maybe just don't even think about these things like because it it does like kind of it does like add this this weight to this existence that we share you know Mm -hmm. it's like this we're sharing this existence on this on like in this life in this universe and to know that there are things like this happening. Right. Even if you're like, as soon as you find out and you know the extent of it to like to an extent or, you know, some extent of it, you like that doesn't go away. You subconsciously ha- like are holding that weight of just like what goes on. Yeah. And it's just, yeah, it's just scary. But anyways, what did you think of all and, of it. And this is the first movie I think on the channel that deals with a real life thing. Yes. Like it's not anything that's just fictional. It's not Batman trying to, you know, um avoid f- uh toxic fear gas or anything like that. It's it's real. So the movie ended, but it's continuing. Like it's happening right now. There are n- infants, newborns that are being sold and and I'm sorry to say, but killed you know, uh, killed, taken advantage of, and it's not covered by the mainstream media and news outlets because all of those are controlled by the elites. You know, BlackRock, uh, I think it's called State Street or... or yeah, well, I, we won't get into oh, the details. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, you no, know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I wasn't planning on doing that, but like my, because my whole... Because we're... I'm uh, sorry, guys. I'm only saying it because on like YouTube will you know probably take this video down if we share too much and then that's why we try to do it on our podcast and try to yeah you know yeah again all of these are just conspiracies you know like that's why it's important to kind of um use that to our advantage whenever it comes to like these conversations but we always talk about these difficult conversations and these very pressing topics on our podcast but we always you know just kind of like dress it up as a conspiracy but but um so do you want me to get through the No, well what did you think though? Like Well, I wrote you... it down. Like um I don't I'm just going to like All right, yeah, go ahead. Quickly just cuz I only wrote like one page because a lot of it is just going to be improvised this time. So this is going to be super quick, honestly. Um First thing I wrote down is military precision in the gift wrapping that already lo- like lets me know that he's someone that you do not want to mess with like in the opening scene when he was wrapping the gift like that was already you know letting you know who this guy was like even before his military friends came in and gave us all of that information through their dialogues yeah i already knew and i wrote that down too attention to detail because of even when he was like sending his daughter off to paris he had the phone ready with his contact in it right. it's like uh okay he already had an idea of which museum she was going to go to from what she said obviously because he didn't know the full extent at that point um but he had everything planned it's like call me every night this and this you know hmm. call me when you get off the when you're when you get to the airport or whatever and yeah like that that's insane to think about it's like that was shown multiple times throughout the movie so it stayed true like it wasn't just that one scene with the gift wrapping like what like when they said it that he has an attention to detail or when they showed it it stayed true the whole movie even like that part when he you know gave that piece of paper and then asked them to translate it 
which yeah. was good luck, you know? Like, that was mind-boggling to me. Like, I've never really experienced a movie where, it, like, I don't know. Like, maybe it's it's not that big of a deal for most people, but that just blew my mind. I'm like, damn. Like, I, like, I, like, I wasn't expecting that at all. Like, I didn't know where that was going. There were so many men in that room, and they were all, like, kind of already eyeballing him up and down. And I kept thinking to myself, like, how is he going to initiate this takedown? Like, how is he going to exterminate all of these threats and the way he did it was just that you know and then the same thing at uh towards the end when the big fish was like holding her that's so interesting because it's years of experience he learns that every bad guy tries to negotiate right so he was holding it and then the moment he spoke because he was going to try to rationalize and try to negotiate give him mom like give him money give him something and then the moment he started speaking he said one word yeah because he let his guard down like but yeah. even just for a split second was enough right for him and that and that was brilliant to me because if you think about it like you can't really multitask so you're like holding this person and now you're going to try to use your brain to speak and negotiate and rationalize and, and try to save your own life yes and so the moment he opened his mouth boom that's the perfect moment it's like it's perfection it's like damn and he was just aiming it to like perfectly at his dome just waiting for him to just open his mouth that's all he was waiting for yeah. and that was mind-blowing to me you know and then same thing with like the phone where he planted the phone so yeah. that the uh, jean claude or whatever yeah. thought that he was there and then on the rooftop and yeah. stuff yeah everything so and then and then taking his bullets out of his gun and or yeah. replacing it or like that's crazy already checking the place that's he he so asked crazy. to use the restroom and then he checked the restroom you know because he knew that you can't really hide it in the bedroom because the wife is always, you know, yeah. moving stuff around, opening drawers, folding clothes. And so you hide it where the wife won't snoop yeah. around. Uh, retired, uh, I, I wrote the second note was mom has a stick up her butt. <laughs> I, I understand. Like, I get it. You know, like you have a shitty marriage. You know, things happen. You break someone's heart. You hurt them on a very serious level that you can't really understand yourself. But... Again, like her, like I get what they were doing, but the character was written in a way where it's, it was just yeah, like I, I can't even have empathy towards her towards the end. Like when she finally recovered her daughter, you know, like I couldn't feel happy for the mom. And I think that that's just poor writing. It's like you can't make someone that dislikable. It's like you can't make them that that putrid of a human. It's like the way that she talked to this guy. And his intentions were good. It's like he just did what he had to do. And that's what parents do. You know, like no one's perfect. And then as an adult and as a parent, you have to eventually just rationalize and just be an adult and just do what adults do. And it's interesting because um, like the way that I was thinking is that th maybe we'll get more backstory because mm. I know that there's a two and three to this. It's like a trilogy. I mm. I think it's a trilogy. Maybe there's more than three. But I hope that if, well, I don't even know if it continues to be Liam again, right? Yeah. Like if it continues to be, what's his name in this? Uh, uh, Brian. 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 Because how, like, how would it make sense, right? Are they going to just keep taking his daughter? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> like, what are they going to take from him? Yeah, because if you have movie? a trilogy about <laughs> your family members being taken and you're this badass military guy, like you would think that after this, he would have a bunch of protocols installed in place where it's like, ex-wife has been taken you know like to like avoid stuff you he know, would like have trackers stuff. like inserted in, the, in yeah his microchipped family. his family <laughs> just like you microchip a dog i know yeah i mean i don't know what the other movies are about or maybe he helps other people who have something like taken from them that's what i kept asking myself i'm like what happened to all those other girls yeah that's true you know because he couldn't call up the french government because the french government it's is in implicated that, yeah. in all of it and so who do you call? Like, you can't call the U.S. government because they don't don't have any jurisdiction within that, you know, country. Like, they can't do anything. But the point that I wanted to make is that I hope that there, like, if that's the case, that there's, like, more backstory on why they split. Like, obviously, mm -hmm. we found out it's because he had the shop and he wasn't spending time with them. Right. And he wasn't coming around. He wouldn't answer calls. <clears throat> he wasn't in his daughter's life. Right. But then it's like, so I do understand, like, she's definitely in, like, a lot of pain and has this resentment and stuff. But, you know, given the circumstances where he quit his job and he retired to be with his daughter and not and and she's happy with a new man. 
Yeah. She's living the life. Dude, she hit the lotto. You know, like and she hit the lottery, and dude. And she's still like so sour. Yeah. And I feel like, I feel like relationships, that's the thing too. It's like, why does it, when it gets sour, like there isn't like a communication, especially when a child is involved mm-hmm. to mend that relationship just so that there isn't this like bitter taste all the time mend it enough to create a bridge yeah because she she was just like wanting to throw him out it's like oh you're coming around now like oh she doesn't even sing anymore just like basically (laughs) demeaning him left and right yeah it's just like it gets tiring too because then you like you know that at home she paints a narrative to the girl and has been painting her whole life, which right. which I've gone through this. It's like my mom raised me as a single mom and my dad was not present. And my entire life, my mom would always make sure to m- remind me of just how much of a bad person my dad was. It's like he's a horrible person. Yeah, he doesn't care and stuff. And that's the worst thing. Like, like I turned out okay, but it's because I've already, like I've been dealing up until now. Like I'm still dealing with a lot of just childhood baggage and a lot of just bullshit that i had to just swallow and just take in it's like as a child like you shouldn't submit a child to any of that like it's just inhumane and and it just does more bad than good and now i can't for the life of me even though i know my dad's a good guy i can't get myself there like i can't push myself to like reach out i can't establish a connection and that's why i felt so much hatred towards that lady because i think that indirectly and again i'm sorry mom i guess but indirectly i think i was just projecting that hatred and like i saw my mom's face i'm like why do you look why are you doing that it's like things can be so peaceful it's like that's what humans lack it's just peace and the ability to just compromise forgiveness people humans are more and more becoming incapable of forgiveness like that's just something that you can't do because pride is like at an all-time high ego is at an all-time high mainstream media sells you and propagates that message individualism being individualistic egotistic narcissistic that's good like you get rewarded for that like you get you know a house on the hills you get a ferrari uh whatever but anyways like that's just you know like um talking on what you said about the mom like i i really did not like that at all and that's the only reason. And I'm only explaining that because a lot of people are probably get, probably going to crucify me for that, you know, if I hadn't like, explained oh, it. Like, give, her, give yeah. her a break. It's like, oh, this guy's, like, looking too much into it. It's just my, look, it's my personal interpretation. Like, that's what this is. Yeah. It's just us reacting and then reviewing it. Uh, retired Special Forces uh, security detail. Yeah, so that was my guess that he was, like, Special Forces. But then going back to what you said real quick uh, about what I think the other movies might be about, my guess... And the best guess that I can make right now is that the stepfather gets involved because that was my first thought. When I saw that huge mansion and all this opulence and wealth, you know, Ooh, and, that's a and juicy just story. a man of power, like who knows, maybe the stepfather is was the involved. one was the one that set everything up. Oh my God. Because the cousins weren't there, they were in Spain. Like the the stepfather, ad, ad, like admitted that he does business with Russians and he does business with these bad people, you know. And then they were like, "Did he was like, oh, did you upset anyone?" But maybe he was just in on it. Yeah. Because he's getting a big chunk of change. Look, one thing that I've noticed is that. And it, maybe he marries women who have daughters. Warford. convinces that convinces them to send their daughters like on these trips because he was the one that was like basically set it up it was like yeah she mm. she should take a trip to paris like he encouraged it that's my best guess is that the wow. stepfather plays a role yeah because he was very silent throughout the whole thing like he didn't really get too much um uh camera time i guess but i think that that's on purpose that's my guess i don't know that's that would be insane But uh, he has seen a lot during war times. Yeah. So, again, the mom said that he's paranoid. I I disagree. Like, he understands how the world works. And, again, I've met people like this. I've met people who are extremely naive. Like, I've had friends. I've had family members, cousins and stuff who are are just super naive to the world. It's like you assume that everybody's good until proven otherwise. And that's not how it works. It's like you also can't assume that everybody's evil. But you can assume that everybody's has the potential for malevolence. And that's when you kind of act in that like arena kind of. And then within that arena, you play the game. 
You know, like you play the game of information. It's like that's what they failed at with the young, uh, attractive French guy. You know, like they just fell for his looks. He's young. He's French. First guy they saw, interacted with them, friendly. And then they just gave all this information. And that's what being naive is in this world because information is power. So they failed in that arena. And again, that stems back to the parents. It's the parents' problems, the parents' fault for not developing mature young adults who have like a like a sound understanding of how the world works and that's when we have kids one day that's what i want to instill in my kids it's like that's what they have to learn it's like you should have survival instincts you should know when you're at a gas station you know like if you're a girl if you're my daughter check the pumps if there's like a like i've been seeing a lot of tiktoks recently where people are exposing these like setups because they're not always as organized as this in a foreign country men dressed in black like this could happen at a gas station with like two low life people who know a guy who's involved and who offer them ten thousand dollars for a blonde girl a young blonde girl they're like oh shit ten thousand dollars we got this we got this and then they'll go camp out and then they'll you know but my point is that they 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 do a bunch of stuff Especially like to your example about like driving a car and this might be like a public service announcement to like women out there and it might help who knows but it's like there's small things that they do like they even mark your like headlights like they pull like small little symbols on your headlights where you won't notice it. They get this um, tissue and they put this like chemical on it where when it comes in contact with the palm of your hand your, your skin and your body absorbs it and then your body goes into like shock and then you kind of have like a seizure. That's so crazy. Or 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 you even pass out or something like that. So even like removing it and like confused, right? Because like you're going to your car and then you're about to open your door and then you see a paper and then your first instinct is to pick it up and like throw it out. You shouldn't even touch it. You call the cops immediately because that means that you've been marked and there are people watching you and the moment you touch it, that's it. You're gone. That's so crazy. And that's happening now in the age of information, the age of um, smartphones, iPhone surveillance all the time. <gasps> You know, Orwell, you know, <laughs> society. I'm already halfway through. I'm just going to go through with it. Uh, girl is too naive, innocent of the evils of the world. That's what we just said. Uh, nerfing kids during formative years. That's a big problem to me. It's like you can't nerf your kid during formative years. This girl, meaning like she was with her mother. Her mother found this wealthy guy. The, you want food? You know, waitress, uh, maid. You want the car? Which car do you want? Uh, pull the car. It's like snap your finger. You have everything. Uh, I want to go to Paris. Okay, private jet. Let's go. Which, by the way, like why didn't he just charter a private jet instead of making them fly commercial? But whatever. Um, but my point is that it's too nerfed. It's like it's too concealed from the world. And I've had friends in Brazil, again, come from wealthy families and who live that way. And I've and I've seen it up front. Like I've, I've seen it in, fir like in first person, <laughs> first person perspective. <laughs> I, I've seen it firsthand is my point. And I've always felt that that was wrong. It's like you can't nerf your kids like that. Like you have to force your kids to figure it out. It's like adapt, adapt to the world. Like don't make the world adapt to you. And that's the problem with like affluence and people who are just disconnected, you know. And what's interesting is that the stepdad was like kind of showering her with with the party yeah, and nerf. and then with the trip to Paris and with the horse and all these things. And then it's like. But at the core, he didn't have real care, which is the greatest gift that right. you can give to your child as a parent. It's like mm -hmm. just true, sincere, genuine care. Yes. You know, that doesn't come like you don't try to prove it any other way than just by caring, you know? Yeah. And I ironically, with the, the karaoke machine, which was cheaper than the horse, yeah. that was like you needed to care about her enough to know what she cares about in the world. Yeah. She wants to sing. So that little karaoke is what she's going to use more than a horse. Yeah. She's going to stay in her room. She's going to use it every day. But to your point, too, what I loved about the movie, which I didn't even write, like, write it down, um, is that they didn't do like a long... 30 minute one hour intro of the relationship between the the father and the daughter to make you feel something why because it's so ingrained it's so intertwined with our dna it's in our dna structure it's like the relationship between kids and parents it's something hundreds universal, of universal yeah. yeah it's like it's been here since the dawn of man it's like it's in there 
so you don't even have to explain that's why when she got taken i was like what the fuck like like shit got real it's like i was like damn oh my god i feel for this guy. like like my heart was racing i was like in the plane with him hearing the good luck i was like holy shit that's your daughter dude you gotta kill everyone you gotta you gotta get her back you know it's just like but that's like the beauty of it is that you don't need like an explanation if a random stranger comes up to you and says and says like um my daughter was just kidnapped in that red car over there immediately i'm like get the fuck in like let's go yeah it's like let's fucking go call the guy like let's figure this out i'm i'm driving right now like, get in it's like i like i don't care if you're a stranger i'm going i'm going and maybe that makes me vulnerable susceptible to being manipulated and then that guy kidnapped who knows but uh, again like i just really like how they did that you know yeah and oh uh, like I think that that's what was making me emotional too, like mm -hmm. throughout the movie, because I did get teary at points. But it's like, especially a a father and a daughter relationship. It's like the father, like your father, just has this like, <sighs> yeah, just like this protection over you that never goes away. But I'm getting emotional because like I had something that happened to me. <laughs> when i was like 14 yeah and my dad like when he found out like he he was ready to just fight you know yeah. <laughs> like literally like i had never seen him just so like <sighs> anyways no yeah go um but just, like, yeah take your time. sorry i did not want to don't even, apologize like, ever i just... wasn't even expecting to address it because i like i didn't know that this was what the movie was going to be about and stuff and yeah like that 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 is crazy it's like you have you like your instincts are just to yeah. you know it's just, it's just to protect it's like yeah. just to do whatever you have to do to there's no conversation at all with me like when it comes to me like there's no conversation but you know but um yeah like i i think that that was like that was the craziest thing and i really bought it like in this movie that like liam neeson was a father and that yeah. he was just genuinely like worried like trying to figure it out like oh obviously he was like this special yeah agent whatever a uh, superhero right essentially, yeah. that could do all this like freaking gun fu like like freaking gun john fu. john wick Whoa. and stuff you know <laughs> yeah but 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 at like at his core you feel you felt that in this movie it's like he was a father yeah who who was just going after his daughter to to try to and he wanted to at first like go with her to paris it's like that that was his inclination and there is a reason for that it's like yeah they have that instinct all the time that worry and i feel like that's any parent so it's not even just like between a father and a daughter it's like parents have worry all the time if they're not with you they're just worrying you For know sure. yeah. yeah they're worrying like oh they're probably even worrying like are they eating well like even yeah. like little things you know mm -hmm. and it's just something that that we won't know until we're parents kind yeah. of you know yeah and and well, we're we already know, like you know parent. it yeah. yeah you know it with shadow with right. with with our dog yeah because like i raised him from like a like from when he was like um i think four four weeks old or something yeah and and yeah like like i can only imagine what it is when it's another human because it's different like dogs you raise them up until a certain point and they're kind of like independent like they'll just you know like they just need to be fed and walked and and you know water and all that but humans it's m way more complex because it's an extension of yourself like it's your dna like it's it's part of you like in a very egotistic way but that's what people do like on like on a primitive level having kids on a subconscious level without even realizing it is just an attempt at living forever it, of achieving immortality through legacy like that's what you know um heritage is like that's what having kids kind of is in my head from a purely biological standpoint but then you add all these layers of complexity and so yeah like to your point like i can only imagine you know yeah but yeah so uh just wrapping up real quick um take your time i wrote two Cause, friends because because um anything that you're saying like i'm already crossing off on my list so just so you know but i don't want to say everything so if you have no any 
I'm telling you, just so you know, like I'm already halfway through my list. Okay. So that's why I don't worry about like me getting to mine because I am while we're talking. All right. So too friendly with strangers. We already talked about that, about knowing how to play the social game. Uh, human I just wrote it down because that's when we realized that it was human Oh, that w- and I, you know what? Mm-hmm. I, I just wanted to point out that I knew it right away because I know how, like, I know what type of terms are used. So for them to say, like, oh, it's two 18 year old girls, like, yeah. the fact that they, po- like, they pointed out the age. Right, because there's a specific target right. for the merchandise. Exactly. So then it's like if if let's say it was like children and then it's like, oh, two ten year olds. Like you yeah. you know that it's nothing else that's going on. It's not like this guy's gonna set up a double date. Like we're not yeah. stupid, you no, know? No, no. That's not what was going on. So as soon as they said it, it's like I knew that it was like an auctioning thing. It's like they're you're nothing else besides this age mm-hmm. and this this uh biological sex like you're a female or a girl they said so it's like two of them this is their age and this is what they are mm-hmm. and that's it yeah. and then if if they could go in even more detail they would say oh one is blonde just like you were saying before yeah. mm-hmm. they're gonna point out features so then it's like one is blonde one is brunette but again it's still objectifying yeah. so it's not like oh two girls from from the u.s who are you know who are are friendly who are you know it's like bro i just got two girls man like we're we're totally in on this man like i got you bro like Like i'll get the blonde and you'll get the beautiful or something like oh they look good it's like they don't care because it's just because there's a demand in the market and they're just trying to fill that demand yeah it's just like this is is. what it is it's like you meet the age you meet the requirements or whatever it's like so messed up but as soon as they said it i i knew i was like Oh, like I, I, but I was still hoping that it wasn't, Mm -hmm. that it wasn't going to go down that path. I was still hoping that it was like, all right, maybe it's just like some other fucked up scenario. Yeah, dude. Excuse my French. (laughs) It's français. (laughs) But um, (laughs) don't. It's français. It's français. It's français. It's français. It's croissant. It's a croissant. All I know is croissant. Et je m'appelle. Et je m'appelle quoi? Et je m'appelle croissant. Et je m'appelle croissant. Et <laughs> that means uh, my name is croissant, which yeah. is true. Which is true. <laughs> croissant. Um, so put yourself in the person's shoes. I like that part when he's like going step by step where he thought his daughter was. Yes. That is literally such a primitive technique when you're hunting an animal for example like i've seen multiple documentaries and just you know uh animal planet stuff where they're like showing how you would track a deer for example and then how like the native people especially like they would be so in tune and so connected with the characteristics of the animals and that's kind of how you get the idea of like spirit animal you know it's usually an animal that's of, of very high significance for that tribe and for that tribe's survival so that animal could have been like a ma- uh it's called a mammoth those like like oh uh, horn, yeah like those, so. those prehistoric those mm-hmm. um ice age ones yeah so like an elephant for sake of example um an elephant could be a tribe's spirit animal because they can use all the parts of an elephant to you know build structures to supply meat and fat and clothing and stuff so my point is they would embrace and become the animal you know like think like the animal it's like they'll they'll track it and see you know tracks on the floor and uh poop and stuff and and know that it's deer poop but then they would you know act as if they were the deer it's like where like where would i go like where would i be so that's a hunting thing you know like it's a hunter's um technique and i just found that really awesome it's like how it showed that it's like you know flashbacks and then it cut between him and her and he was like standing where she was going under the bed the exact moment yes it was incredible i wrote and i wrote down exactly that puts himself in other shoes yeah really it's like yeah it's exactly that because like not only did he do it with his daughter but mm-hmm. he did it with the friend where he literally he literally did like envisioned a play-by-play yeah. of how she fought them off where all of this furniture would have ended up the way that it had right you know and then he did a play-by-play of like what it would look like being in that room to look out 
somewhere that his daughter would have been able to see but still be out of sight right you know and give her enough time to hide and then exactly even the amount of time that it took for them obviously to find he her. wasn't in the sa- she wasn't in the same room like yeah. saying like oh they're, they're here like whatever Whispering. she she obviously was like it was somewhere from afar and he, and he didn't hear the noise you know so he yeah. knew that there was like a distance from where where that was happening to the friend to where the daughter was which yeah. was in the bathroom yeah. so i thought that that was super crazy too like him being under the bed like the replaying her scream like to to re- like if you really think about it he had to put aside his emotions a lot mm-hmm. e- even though it involved his emotions i was like driving him to do this right to go after his daughter but at the same time he had to put aside his emotion and be objective in his way of thinking it's like he had to re-listen to her screaming and 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 saying the things that she was yelling like describing the people Mm -hmm. even though that as a father was probably painful for him you know yeah that that was a uh, a part that really called my attention too is how like objective he was at a point where any other uh, parent who hasn't been initiated in like special operations, special forces, or whatever, um, any normal like uh, mundane citizen, right, would freak the heck out. Like they would be emotional, like "Oh my god, okay, okay, honey, uh, whatever." But he immediately, like, he started taking out like recorders, and then you can see that there was like a switch in his mind. It's like he went from being a concerned father like wondering if his daughter's okay and she got there okay to just being a tactical freaking ninja god the uh, john wick god and obviously this is before john wick like he walked so that john yeah john, john wick, wick could run <laughs> basically this is before john wick yeah i think so this is 2008 when was john wick no way john wick was earlier john wick was earlier than 2008 yes are you serious yes uh, i'm 100 percent sure that we were we pointed it out that's crazy if that's i think it's i think i don't know if it was the 90s even no it's not the 90s but it's i think it's like 2002 if i'm not mistaken i don't know i think it's super early it's much earlier than this and that's why to me this was kind John of Wick like is 2014 is it yep the first one yep holy shit I don't know why I was thinking, oh, I'm thinking of The Matrix. The Matrix is old, <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's what I was thinking of. I'm like, what are you talking about? It's so old. <laughs> yeah. That's what I was thinking of. Keanu oh, Reeves. that's what I, yeah. Sorry, Keanu, your roles are all the same. Yeah. No, I'm kidding. She has <laughs> no, no respect not. for your. <laughs> no, because I'm like so, con- I'm confusing because earlier I said the gun fu thing and, mm-hmm. and I know that John Wick had gun fu, but the Matrix also had like gun fu. Yeah. And it's like Everybody <laughs> has gun fu. <laughs> so then this has gun fu. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to an extent. But then, like, uh, just like touching back on the point it, it like he maintained complete objectivity and he was just very direct to the point and i think that that's what obviously saved her life if he would have been emotional just like the mother was like there like she was gone it's in those critical moments where you have to be very 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 smart and then he put himself in that tactical headspace which was what saved her life yeah um yeah, so focus on the task at hand slash be objective. That's what I wrote. Uh, to kill or not to kill was the philosophical question that I posed uh, at one moment during the movie. Where... Well, we- This is a pretty deep question, and I want you guys to just comment below, if you will. Like, what... Like, if you... But, but really think about it. Like, if he had exploded those barrels that, that, that exploded, but if he had exploded the building with the girl still in there and he had taken a bunch of um calamity like uh what do you call it uh casualties casualties yeah a bunch of innocent girls died would that have been a better outcome considering that he didn't save any of the other ones he just saved his daughter right like he got his daughter and then he got out that's what i'm assuming because it didn't show any conclusion with the other girls so assuming that that's the case those girls are still there Still being sold. The first girl that was, you know, being showcased to those guys who were bidding, she got sold and she's in a different country at the moment. He only got his daughter. Is it a better outcome to die 
in that circumstance, knowing that you're going to spend the rest of your life or until they're done using you, until you get of a certain age, maybe 30 is too old, maybe 25 is too old, maybe 20 is too old, and then they just get rid of you. Is it better to just end it there or to continue that life of being drugged and being abused and used and having no, just being a, 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 a empty vessel? I think, uh, well, that's the thing is like, I stand by like, if it happened, right? Like, if, if it happened, if it, if it exploded, no, if it did happen, but he didn't plan it. Right. Then that's a little bit different than if he like intentionally was like, I'm going to save them by just like blowing the whole thing No, up. no, no, no. Accidentally. Because that's like, why I said like it gets like it gets ready. in that sense. It's like you don't have a, the right to decide what struggle someone wants to go through. Sorry. Someone wants to go through. True. You know, like True. you don't have the right to like. W maybe they did. It would have a chance later on to live a life. So, who are you to now like just take their life and end it? They yeah. right then and there, kind of. No, look, look, completely valid, and that's why I just want to pose the question because I don't have an answer. Like I don't know what I would do because these rings could get shut down. Like that could have gotten shut down at some yes. point. You know, like there's yeah. a possibility where it's like, all right, now it's catching up, and it's ca not only is it catching up to the the leaders that run this this human ring, but it's also catching up to the the, the, the government world. that's involved in it. You know, like the yeah. the French government in this case, what is involved in it, and so it's like yeah. it's catching up with them because now someone knows, someone yeah. has inside information on that, and so that being relayed to some other, you know, group of people can kind of lead to a solution where it gets shut down somehow maybe right. maybe like yeah. again and he was making a lot of noise which is what his old colleague that guy that he visited his wife to and shot his wife he was responsible and tasked with keeping everything on the hush exactly like eliminate this loud mouth this person that's talking too much about what's happening and then you just like cover it up and then same thing at the party with the guy that was like, I have guests here, so let's keep it quiet. Let's kill yeah. him and keep it quiet. And then when when um, Brian, Liam Neeson's character, kills him, he lets the elevator go up, shows all the guests. So that's mm. already going to pose questions. They could easily go down into the basement and see what what's going on in there, you know? That's a great point because I didn't even think about those guests. It's yeah. like aware, like all it takes is like word of mouth, which is like the age of social media too. It's like information now is getting so pushed. Quick. Yeah, it's just yeah. reaching millions of people so e so e easily. And so like a lot of people are waking up to a lot of the things that are happening like as we speak and yeah. things that are happening with, to us like the foods that we're eating like all of these things and that's why by the way that we decided to create a podcast that's centered around conspiracy theories it's because it gives us like an, a platform to really talk about these things you know because i think that it's an exciting time to live in right now because of all these things that are coming to light like all of these things that we've accepted for years and years and again i'm not going to get into specifics here but because it's not the place it's not the right channel but yeah it's just it's a great time to be alive in terms of that like the truth is coming out but it's still not enough like it's still not fast enough people are still dormant and what i was going to tell you too is um what was i going to say crap it was like something that that you said earlier about awareness, right? Like people seeing it and then it's yeah, like Yeah, like like raising awareness is very important, but the problem with today's society is that we have like we're we are at the helm and at the mercy of the 24-hour news cycle. Yeah. So it's like just oh gets my God. recycled and to the next thing. Oh my god, that's so bad, you know, like what happened with um epstein i'm just gonna say that name because you can't really like take a video down because of that but what happened to that guy right the whole world at one point stopped spinning everybody was like he did what he had an island he did he took who how many who was there the list is how long all these names oh my god i'm a f i used to be a fan of this person it's like that's what that party was supposed to symbolize and it was way ahead of the, the of like what happened with that case but my point is that Everybody stopped and was horrified, like, oh, my God. And then the next day, everybody forgot. 
Yeah, or it just like wasn't relevant. Like it just seemed irrelevant to people. Yeah, and people always adopt this mindset of like, oh, wow, that's bad. But, you know, I got to pay my bills. Like no one's going to pay my bills. I can't do anything about it. You know, I just work FedEx. Yeah. Like I'm just a driver for Uber. I'm just, what am I going to do, you know? And that mindset is what enables everything. And then right. you can say, well, then, hey, Callie, like, well, like what's the solution? Like if you got all the answers. Solution is to start spreading awareness, but really like reinforcing that awareness and really like, you know, kind of like planning it and then letting it grow and then nurturing that awareness and like keeping it constant, like not letting it deviate from your line of sight. Like don't let it escape your line of sight. Chase the white rabbit, just like in the Matrix. Chase the white rabbit. If you look away for a second, the white rabbit's gone. Yeah. And that's why it's called the rabbit hole. It's like it goes into the rabbit hole and you don't even know where the rabbit hole starts and where it ends. You know, it's like you have to chase the white rabbit. You have to look at it. The whole time. And that's what Liam Neeson did here. Like he, his character, comp- all the, the whole time, he had no concept of time, space, or his own health. I didn't see him eating once. You know, he, <laughs> there's no hunger. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. But like really, like he probably did eat like and snacked and got like fast food real quick. But it's very objective. It's not like he was just on it the whole time. Like maybe he didn't eat for like those three days because you could go three days without eating, you know? Yeah. Um, okay, so uh, government conspiracy, France involved. Again, this is like, I'm just going to quickly brush on this on just how interesting it is. But I think that art imitates life a lot more than life imitates art. But it's like both, obviously. But I think that art imitates life because it has to have like a source of inspiration. Like where do you inspire every art? And movies are art, you know, paintings, obviously, music. But my point is, I think that that's the case. I think that every country is implicated Every country's world leaders, every country's elite is a part of what's going on. And that's why it's this game that it's hard to beat. Like us, not having much access, not having much power, it's hard to beat generations worth of power, generations worth of influence, you know, uh, dictatorships, uh, you you name it. Like even democracies like ours and and our like friendly country um, allies or whatever, but my point is that I don't know if if it's ever going to crumble, if it's ever going to come to a stop, because as long as there's someone with power and money willing to continue and enable it, then there's a market. Yeah. As long as there's a rich guy, a rich, excuse my French, a, a rich a-hole who has money and who has $100,000 and wants a kid and wants a girl and wants something, someone, he's going to get it. Yeah, like our world is far from like this utopia. Yeah. It's never going to be, I don't think. I don't think. I At don't least think in, not in our lifetime. I don't think. I think it might be hundreds, hundreds, if not thousands of years before humans get to a point where they realize that peace is way more profitable for the human soul than any material thing that we've built or acquired or accumulated yeah. in this lifetime. I think it's going to take a long time but just like every big em- like empire i think it all inevitably crumbles and then it restarts and it's just a cycle it's just a way of life so again it, it will happen but maybe hundreds of years from now thousands of years and that's what's sad it's like we as citizens like we think that we could trust these institutions these governments these people these politicians that we place in office and we're given the illusion of choice and control but at the end of the day they're they're just players in this game that we just are just observing and just consuming and just being a victim of all of yeah, us. Yeah, and they and they all work together. It's called the Bilderberg Group. <laughs> she told me not to <laughs> spit out names, and then all of a sudden she's like, "Yeah, I know exactly <laughs> who they are, and their name is and this." And there you go. <laughs> and there you go. But yeah, um, but seriously though, if you guys are more like interested in these conversations and these heavier topics, I guess uh, we talk about them in length on our podcast. Uh, channel which is mentally gone studios i think I, I, or I God. yeah just just type in mentally gone podcast and then you'll find it but we talk about all this stuff like freemasonry like government shit you know yeah it, and more to come the rabbit hole goes deep on that you have anything else um yeah um but it'll be quick i just wanted to point out um that <laughs> it was ironic that the mom was like painting it out that that brian the dad liam neeson 
was disconnected from um their daughter by saying that he doesn't know what she likes anymore oh she doesn't sing anymore she's not going to use that karaoke machine mm -hmm. and then even when the daughter was like yeah i like art and then the dad was like caught off guard like oh i didn't know you liked art because she was saying that she was going to go to the louvre she and, was lying yeah. yeah and so that that's exactly what i wanted to point out is that if anything he knew like he knew his daughter more than anything and and even though he was away for so long and maybe he knew this like essence of her as a child mm -hmm. he maybe he thought like that that still retained over the years and stuff but ironically it's like the art thing was a lie she wasn't going for the louvre and to see the freaking <laughs> mona lisa or whatever else you know like she was going to watch a rock band yeah which is even more ironic because it's a music related thing so all along like he like my point that i wrote down is that he was never disconnected even in all those years that that he lost with her like all that lost time right it's like he still he still has like this like understanding of just who his daughter is kind of yeah wait wait hold on and then the last things i have is that we see him like throughout the movie taking care of other young females so the singer he's acting as her security slash bodyguard and he saves her life because mm. she almost gets like stabbed or whatever the case is and he stays, he saves her life and then she obviously like repays the debt by offering the singing lessons and stuff but it's interesting because in that moment where where he like is comforting the singer that he doesn't even really know on a personal level you get that essence that he's like fulfilling this fatherly role mm -hmm. you know and then the same thing with the with one of the girls that was part of this like human the one that was drugged wearing the jacket. his daughter's jean jacket mm. he saves her even though we don't know what happens to her at the end which is crazy it's yeah. like did he just leave her there like who knows but he he does save her from there and when he's taking care of her and saying like no leave it it's medicine and whatever and and just the way that he's like you know looking after her kind of obviously to ask questions but i think it was definitely like a well we already knew the the whole premise but it was all like a foreshadowing well at least with the singer it was a foreshadowing of what we were going to expect with the daughter right and they gave us like a little taste of that with just one guy with the knife it's exactly like some random guy. and and then seeing his for that was the first time that we saw him like put his like you know yeah. fighting <laughs> to the test too and it was quick too yeah um and then uh when when uh he when he's like trying to plot against them and then he mics that guy um mm -hmm. be, by using the girl that was on the street yeah um i the guy said like she is my business and then i thought that that was interesting because it's like n not only is she her his business in like a metaphorical sense but she is literally his yeah. business like if she doesn't do her job then he isn't getting his job done and he and you know yeah she's livestock exactly she's just cattle so i just wrote that down because i was like oh that like that's so crazy like just that line like she is my business like literally like his business is this it's like yeah. running these girls and making them do these things mm -hmm. um i thought it was so crazy when he shot the wife and i think that to the point of like oh why didn't he save all these girls like maybe take them off of their handcuffs and all these things the way that i see it is like again he, all he's doing is following his instinct there is a timer on when he can find his daughter which is like the which whole the reason priority. right it's yeah. like this is the priority for him so it's like he doesn't have time to unlock all these girls like you think like you can't you have to think you know you can't just say oh he had he has all this time to like unlock all these handcuffs yeah, and yeah. then who knows if they're gonna they're still gonna get shot up or whatever if they try to escape like he doesn't know how many they said there's like hundreds of guys running this thing yeah what what i'm thinking is that maybe with his group of ex-mercenaries and just ex-military personnel like his group of friends he's gonna kind of like uh, reunite with them and then share all this intel 
that he's gathered because he went into everything. He saw all the operations. He saw the head of the operations. He saw like not the entire thing because I think it's worldwide. Again, like it's scattered throughout the whole world. It's so complex and it's so much and it's yeah, and disgusting. That's, that's why it's by boats and stuff. Yeah. But my point is that he got an in on what happens and now he has this intel. So I hope that in the next movies, like he goes back and or he tries to really pin down what's going on and he finds and he gets to the bottom of it he goes back to those girls and he you know there's there's closure with the blonde friend's family and you know yeah a funeral maybe um but my <laughs> point is that he shot that guy's wife which might seem like counter you might like question it like it might be contradictory like oh like you're gonna shoot up someone else's loved one be just because sense. yours is but but I didn't think that way because to me it's like again it's like if anything that just shows it's like you you have to feel the severity of what it would be like if if your children are abandoned or or if I kill this person you love yeah. right just like I'm right now experiencing my daughter being lost and I don't know what's happening to her and she might get killed so it's like the severity of that which again that guy in that basement of that party also said like oh i have two sons and a daughter but he didn't he didn't feel the severity until yeah. his own life was behind the you know well in yeah. front of the gun kind of which is what liam neeson did like he gave the guy a, a test like he tested where like if if just mentioning like oh like it must be nice knowing that your kids are safe and stuff like he said it to him first and that was his initial test but then once he realized that that didn't work at all and that the guy was pointing a gun down like like pointing a gun at him that's when he made that decision but even in making that decision his intention was to only produce a flesh wound right and that's what he was able to accomplish and so it's not like he he had the intention of killing her on the spot and make him feel it's like now you know what loss is because yeah. he didn't lose his daughter yet he might have done that if he came back and and then just you know but then that's a whole different character it's a whole different story um but in that case it's like flesh wound he he knows like, he's very precise he's down to the details yeah, you know which i'm sure he just like skimmed it even like yeah like, she'll be fine like she'll recover in months time yeah. but then it's just a reminder to the guy like in those months of recovery remember like to be the good guy it's like a constant it's like karma it's like you chose to enable this and now you have to deal with your wife yeah, bleeding out and, on the floor and his kids wouldn't be in his custody anymore because that would all get unraveled too so yeah. his kids would go into someone else's hands and i think that that's like the weight of it it's like yeah it's like when your kids are out of the nest, mm -hmm. it's like the bird's nest. It's like you let them fly, right? Exactly. It's yeah. like you don't know where they're flying off to. You don't know like who who they're, you know, interacting with or who they're, whatever the case is. And then let's say in that scenario, like his wife dies, he he's not going to get custody because they'll find out that he was involved in this stuff, right? Or whatever the case is. And his kids are going to go off to some stranger's hands. And then it's like, who knows what the strangers are going to do to his kids. Right. You know, and I think that that's like the whole way. It's like nobody was like fully grasping what it felt like because they weren't in his position. And I think that's something else, too. It's like you can't it's hard to understand but i do think that it's very easy to sympathize and no one was making that that stride no. it's like you like maybe you don't understand like maybe you don't fully understand at least but you can have an idea it's like it's pretty severe he described it in detail he like the guy knew what was going on and it's uh, this guy's daughter their supposed friends it's like you know yeah um and then the last thing i wanted to point out well the two last things is um that shot where where he finds his daughter finally and then he kills the guy that's like you know threatening to take her life or whatever and and her hair is like uh covering her want like one of her eyes and stuff and the way she looks like she looked so grown yeah you like she looked like a a an adult woman right. at that point versus like throughout the movie yeah. she has her hair pulled back in this like in this hairstyle and she looks like a young girl she looks like this you know you know even the way that she was like carrying herself it's like just full of light like oh i'm so excited running with her friend into the the gate of the airport you know yeah but then at the end, like seeing that, it was like the you saw it like in that frame. And I immediately like 
made a note of it. It's like you just saw the innocent stripped. Exactly. Kind of. But then. Mm -hmm. And exactly but, it. but then it's so strange because it felt like it was still retained in some way. But I do think that maybe that could be like dissociation. Yeah, like that's maybe what it's not fully processed yet. And yeah, that's what I was going to say, too, is that that was my only, I guess, criticism towards the end. Like the girl doesn't seem like she changed or she went through this experience. None of them kind of feel that way. And it could be her dissociating and just com like compartmentalizing everything that happened and just trying to forget about it. But I don't think that, that they meant to do that. I don't think it's that deep, you know, like I don't think that the writers and the director meant to do that. But I do agree that throughout the film, like, I, like, I, like I was pointing it out. I was like, she's carrying herself as like a 12, 14 year old. Like she's not 17 in my eyes. But 17. Yeah. But you have to, I think I was pretty grown at 17. I, I was uh, like I was acting like her at like 15 14 like that's how I would act kind of but even then I, like maybe it's cuz I don't know it's just it's just I don't know Yeah I think like it, it I guess it all depends on like upbringing too you know like yeah. especially her dad wasn't in the picture and she has like this stepdad kind of you know Yeah but I kind think of that like spoiling her a little bit so so there there were there is going to be like a few differences Right but but I think that it was deliberate for the purpose of the movie it yeah. just wanted to like remind the audience that this is what Liam Neeson saw and maybe that's what it is is us seeing the world through his perspective and his wife is just very you know um cold and just very stern and then his daughter has this childlike innocence that emanates from her but then it might look maybe 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 the the people who made this movie had that intention and it's that complex maybe but then the moment he saw her in that moment when one of her eyes was covered it's like part of her innocence was covered it's like he saw her as a grown woman and it was that in that moment that it just hit him. It was like, oh, my God, look what happened to my baby girl. Like, what happened yeah. to my little girl? It's like, she's gone. That's a grown-ass woman. It's like, but then after that, when he restores order in the world, she returns to being his little girl. So I think that maybe it could be so trippy that, like, we're seeing the movie through his perspective, you know, the whole time. Who knows? Yeah, that would be. Yeah, because if you think about it, like, that is what's happening. Like, we're following his story. Like, it doesn't you know, go to the mother and then show her and what she's doing, all the effort and stuff. It doesn't do any of that. And that's the very last thing I wanted to point out. Like when when they show it back up to the airport, the mom is just like smiling like, oh, yeah. thank God. And then that's it. Yeah, I think like, it's like poor writing and poor acting towards yeah, the end. I think, but I, I try to like forgive it because I'm like, all right, 2008, you know, it's yeah. like, you know, they're... It's no, going to be it's going to be a hit and miss uh, like even in the Godfather we pointed out there there were some scenes where we were like really like that. Yeah, but that Shawshank Redemption little... had great acting throughout the whole thing. True. It's like I had no moments but, where I was like oh like even the Tommy kid like he was a good actor, you know, everybody. But I feel like it's I don't know like I think they treated the mom too much as like a side thought. Yeah. Too much though too where much. it's like you know, it didn't like I didn't feel the pain of a mother seeing her child knowing right. knowing like or what I thought is like maybe she didn't know mm -hmm. what happened. Like she just thought she just thought that she was kidnapped. She mm. didn't know like the full extent, like the prostitution and all that, you know? Yeah, because again, like it doesn't show all those details but i would assume that whenever L liam neeson's character is like kind of sitting down and just waiting for the girl to kind of um get all of the drugs out of her system and he's sitting in that hotel room that he would like update the mom on stuff you know like yeah. every now and then intermittently like he would pick up the phone and just call and say but like, but maybe not because maybe from, not from what it seems he hasn't divulged much of the information of what he's done in his like career right the you mom, know well the mom knows and then she's told the daughter to for her to ask him right because i because because I, I feel like a lot of moms do that it's like like what does your father do ask him ask like ask yeah, him yourself go, go ask your father yeah it's like very prideful it's like instead of just you know trying to explain but i think that the mom knew and that's where her resentment kind of stem stems from too it's like she knows that her ex-husband was a killer and maybe there's like ethical moral things that we don't know of and maybe we discover in the next movies where the mom like there's a reason why and then it explains the whole backstory 
it says that she's against killing you know like she's a christian lady like who knows like you don't know yeah maybe maybe but that's all i have i just said that i didn't really buy her i didn't buy her feeling you know her emotion yeah at the airport i was like yeah i was like really like she even was smiling i was like i mean i get the smile like maybe it's also a display where it's like you have to kind of you you can't be like too emotional because then you don't want to like break make, your brain right or or like make the daughter feel yeah. worse or have like this heaviness because like at the end you still see that innocence there so it's like let's try to preserve it instead of like exploding it into this big thing where it's like oh my god like you're never gonna go traveling mm. again alo- like you know and then yeah. whatever but my my last thing which i did mention already is i just really wish they had at least like one dialogue about the friend the blonde friend yeah just one like and when he saved her like she should have hugged him and said what about so and so like 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 is she okay yeah you like one like one little thing like that because then it just to me it comes off very selfish because again there's no closure with the other girls so to me like i'm viewing liam neeson like like subconsciously i'm thinking of the guy as like a selfish guy it's like you i understand everything but you also have to you know show me that you're at least going to try to save the other girls otherwise you're just a selfish person who's just out for himself and you're no different from the bad guys you know they're they're all selfish and so if we had that at least like it would have helped but then yeah and then the end like tying in with the singer thing i get it if it felt rushed and it felt kind of out of place it's like that's not really like a good ending like all of this happened and it's yeah. like all right let's go get your singing lesson yeah because we don't even know if the girl's good at singing like i didn't see her sing you yeah. know and like they should have even done that like if i was the the director <gasps> like like i would have shown a shot of the girl and hired a actress who can actually sing like has like potential and then showed her at the birthday party plugging in the karaoke machine and like singing or when she's captured like wherever she's locked up you hear her like like singing like uh, softly like singing or something exactly and then that and then that's how he finds her and that's how he knows it's her it's like imagine he's like in a huge warehouse but then it would have been about singing so i get it no it but it wouldn't <laughs> have been about no it, look look it, look it uh, it it does it changes like the whole if you think about it it, really it makes does it poetic change. yeah it, it makes the whole thing the whole poetic narrative because then you're you instead of like thinking about what's happening happening with like a the father trying to find the daughter you start thinking about like oh yeah like she wants to be a singer oh. yeah like you're not you know like <laughs> it'll I like yes i, I think so i think it becomes like a quirky character trait that makes it easier for him to accomplish his goal which is finer it's like if she was being showcased right and then when they like brought her out the guy the handler like shoved her and said like oh and this one can sing too sing sing now show them that you can sing and then and then she's forced to sing and stuff and then maybe that's how he knew like in that moment without seeing her face like she hadn't turned around and then she starts singing and then it clicks in his brain and then it has like a throwback to the opening scene at the birthday party when she was singing happy with all her friends and her family around her all those people and then it clicks and then that's when he sees her face and then boom so it doesn't become about uh singing it becomes more about about like uh, again him knowing her enough and caring and the father knowing the daughter yeah. better than anybody else it's like he has to hear her sing and a song is the most beautiful thing that we humans have ever created uh, and then second to that or on <laughs> equal level is you know art paintings yeah. and drawings but the voice it's like people stop to listen to a beautiful voice which is what we saw saw in Shla- Sh- Shawshank Redemption you know like when he played the opera music and then everybody just stopped in the courtyard everybody in that prison experienced god and i feel like that i don't know like that's what i would have liked more yeah like that that would have made sense the way that you're putting it like integrate the singing so that at the end when christina aguilera or britney spears opens the door and then you know like then it makes sense it's like oh okay yeah it like it only like my point is that either they take out the end scene where she gets her vocal lessons you know or take out sing well or or they add more about the singing thing to show because it it just felt so off at the end it's like 
I know that it's like, oh, look, and and uh, look, now that you're back, your dad had you this surprise ready dream. for you. Yeah. But it's like there was such a, I don't know, it's like so, Rush. I just want to figure out what she, uh, what they're all feeling really yeah. after everything. That's the thing. It's like it, it, it felt rushed, which which makes sense why they have more films. And it's a one hour and a half movie, so it's a pretty short movie. So quick, yeah. But yeah, I'm yeah. excited to watch the next one. I, honestly, I, I'm actually curious. Like, I I need to see this through. Uh, and people have been asking, like, are we gonna finish um the Batman uh yes. trilogy, the Dark Knight trilogy? Yes, we are. We're gonna cover all Quentin Tarantino's films because we only experienced uh, one of his films for the first time. It was Pulp Fiction. There's like a bunch of them apparently. But yeah, so all of them. We're gonna finish all of these and tie the end loop and. You know, John Wick, one, uh, two, three, and four, you know, all of it. But, yeah, this also has been added to the list now. Like, I want to see, like, what happens. This was a great movie, though. Yeah. It was. Like, I was I was genuinely invested. And, um, yeah, like, I was hooked. And I was emotionally invested in it, for sure. Yeah. All right, so um, anything else? That's it. All right, so uh, with that being said, guys, um, if you want to support, the best way to support is obviously by dropping a like, uh, turning on your notification bell so you never miss a post, a video, uh, and subscribing if you, haven't al- if you haven't already. I can't speak today. If you haven't already, uh, share this with a friend, with a film head, a film fanatic, with someone a who daughter. likes... With a daughter. If you're a father, share, like, share your thoughts, honestly. Like, if you're a daughter... If you're someone's daughter, comment below. Let us know what your thoughts are. If you're someone's father, same thing. You know, even if you're a guy, like you, like even if you're someone's son, like because it happens to not just women. It just happens that this film focuses on that. But it's little boys, you know, young men, older men. Everybody it happens to everybody. Everybody's a target. But um, yeah, comment that below. And then lastly, um, if you want to support us even more, take it to the next level, our relationship here. Uh, you could um, find us on Patreon and help support us through there. You'll get early access to these films, so you'll watch this, you know, much earlier than YouTube does. And we are currently working on exclusive content, so we're gonna have like exclusive movie movies that's gonna live on Patreon for a while before it ever even goes to YouTube. So if it does, who knows? If it ever does, yeah, exclusive TV series. So everything is gonna like we're still working on it. But if you want to support, that's the best way to keep this whole system functioning yeah to keep this boat afloat afloat yeah Yeah. (laughs) anything else that's it all right so with that being said don't forget that it's never wrong to be mentally gone peace Peace to the the world. world